Greetings, YouTube. I recently found myself pondering scale in comic stories, both in comic books and in films. Um, I have accumulated a number of graphic novels and collections of issues over the last couple of years. I've been kind of working my way through them recently. Um, on Sunday mornings, I've been uh, ripping CDs to add to our Brendan B2 digital jukebox. And since that takes like six to eight minutes to rip a single CD, it's a great opportunity just to read a bunch of pages of a comic book, get up, switch the CDs, and do it over again. So it's a good time to do two things at the same time. Um, and I was looking at a Guardians of the Galaxy. And the Guardians of the Galaxy collection, I don't remember what they were. But they were on Nowhere, and it was their headquarters, and uh, the psychic dog was talking, as opposed to just being a background character from the films, um, the Soviet dog. Um, and... It had sort of the vibe that the films had, but it was a more comic booky. And as I'm reading it, I got about, I don't know, a third of the way through the whole thing, and I just got bored out of my mind. Because it was this big, sweeping, cosmic, we must close all these interdimensional portals because these space xenophobic bigots want to cleanse the world. Yada, yada, yada. Oh, God. Damn it, it's boring as crap. I just found myself just like, yeah, I like the art. And some of the writing is awesome. And it really does evoke some of the dialogue and the banter from the films. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm bored crapless. But then I looked at a Harley Quinn collection. And I, it was volume one from the New 52, um, where she inherits a building which has a freak show in the and a wax museum in the first uh, and a bunch of weird wacky characters uh, who all are very comfortable with the fact that she's uh, insane and insane murderer um which is disturbing but she, they're very comfortable with this um and the scale was her life trying to be a landlord and make enough money to cover the rent not the rent but the taxes and the debts and all that crap the upkeep um which should really be done with the rent from the tenants, but whatever. But um, if you have an entire building, you should be making a profit, and she wasn't. But the scale was small, and it was so much more engaging. Not to mention they had a storyline with an octogenarian $6 million man hunting down the remnants of Cold War Russians. Um, and it was just delightful. The name Cyborg, as in like Cy, the name. Yeah. Crack me up. Um, and it was a lot of fun. Then I got to thinking about like Deadpool, the two movies. And those two movies, the scale was small. Yes, the ramifications of the second one were bigger, but they were still all about him saving the life of a kid, maybe saving the, the love of his life in the process. And the first one was just him getting revenge. It was a small scale film, and I like that scale better, and I am sick to death of big sweeping stories. And like when you introduce a superhero, I don't want the first movie, the Oranges movie, to be a big sweeping cosmic storyline. I don't. I want it to be small scale. I want to establish the character. I want to be, I want you to drag me in, make it interesting, make me want to care about the character. So I'll come back for a second film. It's one of the many problems with Green Lantern. Because they went cosmic and boring cosmic. As opposed to kind of playing with what Green Lantern can do, which is anything. But and, and but you're just starting out as that. That is cool. Now, the Milo's Morales version of uh, Spider-Man, the Spider-Verse, it was a slightly cosmic in the sense that we have to, we have to collapse all these multiple ver verses, this gate, so that the world is not damaged by it. Um, but it still was him becoming who he was. As someone described uh, uh, very well as that in the scene where he's tied to the chair, and his father's talking to him, and he can't reply. His father leaves. And it's, and someone says, Miles closes his eyes, and Spider-Man opens them. 
and it was beautifully phrased, and it was exactly what was going on. Also, Kingpin is not a challenge for Spider-Man. Spider-Man hits him once, particularly a Spider-Man who has not figured out how to use his powers yet, and Kingpin dies. Period. Kingpin is not a challenge for Spider-Man. Nor is he a challenge for Luke Cage. He's a challenge for Daredevil or for Frank Castle. Because they're normal humans. Spider-Man, Luke Cage, they're metahumans. Um, and Kingpin isn't. But that's beside the point. But I really prefer the small scale. Now, just last weekend, I saw, or at the time of the filming, I saw Birds of Prey with Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn. And I thought it was fun. It didn't, I didn't think it was as good as Deadpool was. I could see how they were going for a similar thing. I think they would have been better off to get the guy or the woman, whoever the hell wrote the Deadpool movie. I think that dialogue was better than the dialogue in uh, the, the Birds of Prey. Um, sorry, text from my wife. But uh, I just like that scale. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but it, it's a lot about just Harley saving her ass. Harley trying to stay alive and maybe do a little bit good in the process, but mostly just staying alive. And that's cool. And I liked it. And it was much more approachable and more fun. Hancock, which is still one of my favorite superhero movies, it's him figuring out who he is and finding his place in the world. That's the perfect scale. That is the perfect the redemption story. You can't go wrong with those. So... Let's get away from some of the big cosmic things. Yes, the Marvel Universe did it really well, but they did it over how many movies? Was it 20? So they built up to it slowly. And it got ramped up as we went. And it was fun. But, but like Thor Ragnarok, that was kind of had some sweeping stuff, but it still wasn't as big as the overall, you know, whole Marvel storyline was. And that was an excellent film. Guardians of the Galaxy, the first one was... Yeah, it's, it, it, there's Infinity Stone involved. For the most part, it's the team coming together and becoming a family. Redeeming themselves to each other and to themselves. These scales are good and fun, and I like them. All this co sweeping cosmic crap that wants me to think that this guy who just came out of the shoot, he's a brand new superhero, or superhero, and, and, that they, and she knows how to handle her powers to the point where she can take on the universe. It, it, it's boring. Star Wars A New Hope was great because Luke was a bumbling idiot. That was fun. It didn't get really big and sweeping until the end, and that's okay. We had that arc, the growth. So... I like the scale of smaller stuff. So let's talk about this. What scale do you prefer? Do you have a preference? Do you think that when a hero comes out of the gate and they become super beings, you know, out of the bat, it's okay. You accept that. Or do you prefer to have a slower growth curve, which I prefer? Alrighty, so let's talk about comic books and films um, and scale. 